Hi folks, I'm Jamily. Now this is going to be a different video from what I have done previously. This is a very important video that affects my family right now. And they have given me their blessing to go public. This concerns Selwood Housing and their abysmal treatment. This is a letter which I have written to the Housing Ombudsman and reads as follows. To whom it may concern, I am reaching out to you on behalf of my family and crucially my uncles Martin and Ian Dutch, who reside at 14 Cedar Grove, Trowbridge, BA140HT. To express issues pertaining to Selwood, their conduct against Martin and Ian since the passing of my nan, Doreen Dutch, who died suddenly on December 21st, 2023. My mother, Sue Cockrell, has already emailed Selwood, has already emailed Selwood's complaints department on February 8th of this year. The email details as follows. Receiving a phone call from a lady called Paula. She didn't give her surname because Sue was at Southampton Airport to pick up her granddaughter, Mia Dutch, who was going to move in with Martin and Ian. Mia is transgender. She's been looking for work and apprenticeships which weren't available in the Shetland Isles where she was living. After Nan's passing, Mia was offered the room, but Paula informed us that this wasn't allowed, but Mia had nowhere else to go. Paula then informs Sue that Martin and Ian are in arrears to the sum of £790. We estimate that the arrears amount to at least six weeks rent. This phone call was the first time hearing this and Selwood had sent no communication whatsoever to this detail. Martin, Ian and Sue had met with Emma Andrews twice before February 8th and the rent arrears weren't mentioned once. The rent had come from Doreen's account, but her account was frozen as her estate had gone to probate. Emma was informed. No attempt to set up a temporary account, so Sue paid the arrears after returning from the airport as it was too late in the day. And there was no chance for Martin or Ian could deal with the situation. Eight weeks of rent was paid, which was suggested by Paula, into a temp until a temporary account could be set up. Was it Selwood's intentions that Martin and Ian would be in arrears of up to a grand, which would have made them look like bad tenants if slash when offered another tenancy? Sue was the only contact since Martin and Ian both start and finish work before and after Selwood's business hours. Martin and Ian had to take time off work to attend. Paula had also mentioned a letter had been sent out to them to set up a third meeting with Emma Andrews on Wednesday the 14th of February. The letter, which we heard was hand-delivered, did not arrive. Here's the details of those meetings. The first meeting attended by Martin and Sue. Details of bank accounts, birth certificates, proof of address letters. No photocopies were taken. We were under the impression that the chance of keeping house was 50-50. After the meeting, Martin was told he could not buy the house, even though he has the capital. At this point, we had surmised that they had put the house out to bid 
before the surveyor had seen the house and seen the damage. The language used gave that impression. The second meeting, bank statements were forwarded that should have been photocopied in the first meeting, taken before the tenancy was due to expire. The third meeting, all other proof of income and outgoings, prying into pensions, which was none of their concern, and there was very little time, given the long hours they work, to get the further details within the time Emma had asked for, so the big decision had to be postponed. I hope you got that right. Emma had had more than enough info. She didn't need to know the pension details. Martin has capital, but Ian does not. All of this could have been covered in one meeting instead of taking valuable time off work and Ian had been getting grief from his boss over this. All they needed was proof that they could cover the rent. Martin should not have been penalised for having money and pensions. Sue had emailed Jason Humphreys to whom she believed was the point of contact regarding the tenancy to inform Selwood that Mia would be moving in, but did not receive an acknowledgement until she sent another email where she was told she was supposed to contact Emma Andrews, for which Sue had done previously. Here Sue's email ends, and this is what's happened since. When the surveyor arrived, they came two hours before the agreed time and did not inform Sue. Thankfully, Martin was home to take them through the details. The surveyor seemed to believe that a lot of the damage can be fixed by Selwood. The house hasn't had anything done to it since the 1990s. The mould in the kitchen, in the cupboards, is so deep that a touch-up is impossible. Selwood has said that in the most recent letters that they were going to leave the kitchen until 2025. They also say that the bathroom, also covered in mould, will not have any work done on it for the next 10 years. Windows, doors need replacing, the radiators are in the wrong place, the ceilings are subsiding, there's asbestos in the front window sills in the living room, and they are exposed. The outhouse has a hole in the ceiling from a job that was never finished back in the 1990s. The house needs an overhaul. We think at least 50 grand for everything but Selwood is adamant that they can fix it all, but have not taken into consideration the amount of work it's going to take. We requested the right to buy before Nan passed, but Selwood said they wouldn't give until after the new year. After that, nothing. Selwood doesn't want Martin and Ian to have the house. The best scenario is to allow Martin to buy it. He has the money to put down a sizable deposit and fix it up. But the way Selwood has treated him and Ian has been cruel. Selwood hasn't listened to the concerns brought forward. They have acted in a manner detrimental to their principles. Disrespectful and belligerent. My family has been living there since 1964. Doreen and her late husband Frank and their children, Sue, Carol, Ian and Stephen, were the first tenants. They had two more children, Anthony in 1965 and Martin in 1970. Martin and Ian had moved out 
but circumstances brought them back. Martin came back in 2017 and Ian in 20 and Ian in 2021. To see our family home taken away from us in such a way is heartbreaking. To have no hope, no rights in continuing on when we have the means. Well, I've emphasized my feelings. I would have thought that my niece, Mia, being transgender would have some rights too. The recent letters, three in fact, telling Martin that they have nothing for him. He must find his own place. Ian will be given a one-time offer, which if he agrees, Martin can then be turfed out. If Ian decides not to take it, he will also be turfed out. Ian has knee issues and both he and Martin have rheumatoid arthritis. Being offered a private residence is unfeasible. Ian doesn't make enough and Selwood knows this. Renting in Trowbridge is too expensive. The bills they would have each would increase and the food bill would take a big knock. If they were to be moved out, why not offer them a two bedroom house so they can split the bills? Or better still, let them stay and negotiate with Martin. The further language used in the letters is confusing as it continues to be disrespectful. Selwood is planning to start work in May, yet Mi Selwood is planning to start work in May, yet made no mention of them being moved out. But wants someone there to let them in when they arrive. At the time of writing and today, we estimate Martin and Ian have about four weeks left. I should also like to mention, for which Selwood also knows, that Ian has a Maine Coon cat. And it would be in Ian's best interest for them to stay together. This whole situation has had a detrimental effect on Martin and Ian's mental health after the loss of their mother. And now the family home is being taken from them and Selwood claim they are compassionate, but have not shown it. They have disregarded all that has been said. Martin will be having to take a dip into his savings to remedy his situation, which will add at least between 300 and 400 quid a month on top of what he's paying now. There's also an ongoing complaint to Selwood about the rent arrears. Further complaints into Selwood's conduct will also be made by Sue and Martin and Ian. Can you find some way to remedy this distressing situation? With everything that's happened, we're considering legal action. I, on the other hand, like I'm doing right now, I'm going to share this story on social media. We look forward to your response. And there it ends. That was hard to read out. And I have a fucking headache. The government has moved the goalposts so many times that we feel that our rights just don't matter anymore. Which is why we're... And the fact Selwood has acted, they have the audacity to say that they're compassionate, they're kind, they care. 
nothing has happened in the last few weeks has proved any of that. That's all I want to say on the subject. Please share around because this is important. All right, that's all I want to say. Cheers.